get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a beach If you find the same like right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise All right. Hey, welcome everyone. John Corkin here. I am the host of the Smart Business Revolution podcast. This is a live episode. I'm here with Dr. Jeremy Weiss of the Inspired Insider podcast. Dr. Weiss, how are you doing? Thanks for having me. All right. Love the enthusiasm. Here we go, everyone. (laughs) Um, So I'm excited because, you know, every week through my podcast, I get to talk to smart CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs, from all kinds of organizations, ranging from recently interviewed the original CEO and co-founder of Netflix to YPO, EO, Activation Blizzard, Landing Tree, OpenTable. Jeremy, who are some of the different amazing guests that you've had on over the past few years? Yeah, I mean, some of the amazing guests are probably companies people have never heard of, but um, some of the notable names, uh, someone was asking us recently, who are some of the interesting more household names i guess i had the founder of atari p90x rx bar a lot of the companies that i admire and the people i admire uh, quest nutrition big league chew i used to chew that in little league when i was younger <laughs> uh i still do actually so some of those companies have been amazing to hear from the founder and how they started it i mean the yeah and the funny thing about that and then we'll get into the content here what we're going to be talking about in this episode in a second but the funny thing about that is that you know um i find sometimes the more famous people that you interview it doesn't really register it doesn't move the needle as much for them it doesn't it's not as meaningful for them for someone who's who's been in a lot of media before and it's a more deep meaningful uh, experience on both ends for your guest and for yourself when you have someone who hasn't received a ton of exposure already, at least in my experience. Yeah, they've been doing really amazing things, but just kind of flying under the radar and not really wanting or needing the the media attention. It, exactly. Anyways, but the, the point to that was just that um, of all my guests, one of the ones I enjoy talking to the most is you, of course, who has been doing this for so long. And uh, one of the most seasoned entrepreneurs, even more seasoned as an entrepreneur than many of the guests that I've had on. Um, so uh, anyways, the, the point of today's episode is uh, we're going to talk about the five different types of content that every business needs to create. And of course, we're biased, but one of the easiest and most effective ways to do that is using a podcast and content marketing. So we're going to get into that in a second. But first, before we do, this episode is brought to you by Rise25 where we help B2B businesses to get clients, referrals, and strategic partnerships with Done For You Podcasts and Content Marketing. And if you're listening to this and you're curious about how it could work for your business, how you can get more referrals and strategic partnerships and build great relationships, meet interesting people, gain tremendous insights from talking to smart people, send us an email at support at rise25media.com or you can visit us on the web at rise25media.com. All right, so... Jeremy, John, really, real quick, one thing we always say is if you have a business, you should have a podcast. Just absolutely. like, and and again, we would say this before it's self serving when we have a company that obviously we can't, John, you say this all the time, we can't help everyone. Like, not everyone's a good fit to work with us. We're not a good fit to work with everyone, but we still believe that every business should have a podcast, just like every business should have a website. Um, and before it was even self serving for us to say that, we still 100% believe that we think everyone, every business should have a podcast. I, I agree 100%. Yeah. And we're not the only ones who say that. And it's really remarkable how mainstream it's become. I mean, literally last night, I was watching Jimmy Kimmel. Um, and he had on Sean Hayes, who's the uh, one of the stars from Will and Grace from that sitcom. Um, and he was on not to promote a movie, not to promote a new TV show. He was on to promote two podcasts and mm. he, he was the, the the main guest and at the time i was watching it i had my laptop up in front of me i had the new york times the main page of the new york times the, oh, an article there was about uh, a podcast and so i'm sitting here new york times jimmy kimmel show you know it's amazing how mainstream it's become but let's dive into this this idea of the five different types of content that every business needs to be creating jeremy do you want to give yeah. us an overview yeah i mean 
I can give an overview. Let's just start with the first one. And the first one, this is, you know, we eat our own dog for, we listen to our own advice, right? Because we're doing it right now. The, the first one is thought leadership. Every company should have a, uh, you know, content, if it's a podcast, episodes on their internal thought leadership, the CEO, the C-suite, other people from the company. And it should, and there's seven different, usually when we're brainstorming with people, we brainstorm under seven different categories for internal thought leadership. Um, and one example of that is um, frequently asked questions, questions you get a lot, questions you sp maybe have spent 15 times this week saying the same thing over and over. And you could maybe record it and send it to someone so that they can learn uh, and explore deeper, right? Right now, someone said to us, I love this concept around the five different types of um, content I should be producing. You should talk more about this and go, that's a good idea. That'll be our next topic that we talk about. <laughs> so we're doing it right now, which is because we probably say this you know, 15, 20 times a week to different people. And so right now we're recording it, right? And, Absolutely. Right. Yeah. You capture it, but you do it in a, in a way that meets you where you're at. So I think what a lot of busy founders think is that I'll do this one day when I have time or resources and it never happens. Right. But what we're big advocates of is just have a conversation. You know, you have conversations all the time as it is. Maybe you, as you said, you repeat an idea or a concept or a framework or a strategy. You tell people that over the phone, you don't realize that that might take five minutes. It might take 10 minutes, it might take 20 minutes to explain, but you can record it, create a resource that you can utilize over and over and over again. And you do it in a way that allows you to maximize your time. So this is going to take you and I, this is like 15, 20 minutes to do this presentation. When we're done, we're going to upload it. It'll take us less than 60 seconds. The team will take over and they'll handle everything else. And that's what's wonderful. So that's thought leadership. What's yeah. another category? So really quickly, yeah, exactly what you said. Just to piggyback off of that, what could save you and your team time where if you did it, it would save you 15, 20, 30 60, two hours, three hours of, you wouldn't have to explain that as much or as in much detail anymore. So that's the thought leadership. And, and the other thing was, as we get into the other ones, John, you want to think about is people skew all ends of the spectrum. So some people, when they think of creating content or a podcast, they think of only this one type and they yeah. only do thought leadership. Like I'm just going to record my thoughts and do 15 or 20 minutes and record them every week. And having a spectrum of these, a diversity of these is really beneficial. Absolutely. Yeah. And another big, well, we'll get into some of the other categories. Which category do you want to so, uh, yeah, hit the next? next one is referral partners, strategic partners, big champions of you and the business, right? And so referral partners, strategic partners, it's really, you want to capture amazing content, obviously. And the people who are your referral partners, strategic partners are typically in an adjacent or similar field. And also you share, you know, if you've shared and they refer to you, you probably share uh, values, ideals, core values, and types of clients as well. So there's many reasons to talk about um, and profile your best strategic partners and referral partners. Yeah. And it goes back to what we often talk about is it's sexy to think about cold leads, right? To go and meet, get new leads coming in the door. But what's not sexy, but quite effective is doubling down on your biggest champions, the people that uh, already know, like, and trust you, love you, that have been singing your praises, telling others about you. Doubling down on those relationships is incredibly powerful. You, you'll, you'll, squeeze, you'll squeeze more value out of that relationship. Yeah. And it will lead to other great things because they're more likely to introduce you to other great referral partners. Yeah, I mean, one thing we do with, with clients, John, uh, is a Dream 100 blueprint where we map out a six to 12 month plan. And one of the things we do in those sessions is map out that Dream 100, which is refer which are some of these categories. And we often forget our best referral partners and strategic partners. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So um, that's one, that's two types. So first was thought leadership, um, including uh, seven different subcategories, including FAQs, frequently asked questions, 
The next one was referral partners, strategic partners, and big champions. What's the third? Um, the third is clients. You know, have your clients on and profile them in their business and what they're working on. Obviously, you know, you um, have developed a relationship with them. You're working with them um, and profiling them. And also, obviously, throughout the conversation, they will it will come up that you help them and they'll probably hopefully say something nice about you on there. Um, and so it's something you can point other companies to, to say, Hey, like this is a great story, but also this is one of our clients and here's a little bit about how we help them. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, so that's a great, uh, great point. So featuring your clients, um, and you know, it, it could be in different stages of the client, uh, journey or life cycle. It could be on the front end. It could be in the middle. It could be on the back end. So it doesn't always have to be at the cert same stage of that client life cycle. I, I just like to point that out to people because it could be, you know, someone who's been a client for quite some time, but you haven't, taking that relationship to the next level. Doing an interview with someone is a great way to learn more about them. You build appreciation. They're more appreciative of you after you've done that, after you've you've promoted them in their business. So it can it can take that relationship further. So that's a great point. Let me um, let me just say really quickly. So we gave the example of the first one, which is your thought leadership. The second one we talked about was referral and strategic partners. The example is like we've both had Ian Garlic on our show. He's uh, we love his service, and if people are looking for case stories, specific case stories to do with their clients, we recommend Ian, and he recommends us as well. And profiling him and having him on and having that conversation to point towards that we can go, hey, check him out. Here's the podcast we did with them is a, a great way to to feature and profile and give to your network. You know, on the client side, we'd have many clients on our podcast um, who talk about who, you know, without a saying go, oh yeah, and I just want to mention, it, it's been great working with you guys and they'll, they'll say good things about us. Um, yeah, I often say it's the best way to get a testimonial because it's hard <laughs> to ask people for testimonials. It's hard to have that kind of confronting conversation around, um, what do you think of what we've done? It's very exposing. It makes you be be very vulnerable. Whereas if you turn it from, I want you to become a testimonial on my website so you can be part of my marketing. When you shift that from, I'd love to feature you on my podcast so I can tell the world about your service. It's a completely different yeah. ask. It's a give rather than a take. And then ultimately what ends up happening is they'll end up saying some some kind words about you um, and I also say this, you know, coming from the legal background as a lawyer, you know, a lot of people are sensitive about revealing who their clients are. Well, consent is a way for clients to acknowledge, uh, uh, you know, marketing content. So if they consent to being a guest on the podcast and they talk about you, you know, being a client of yours, they've consented to that being a, a public. Um, so that is a great way to yeah. get. You know, client relationships out in the open and to, and to um, be able to share with others, you know, some of the good work that you're doing. And another example, um, the client thing. So it allows me to, when I recommend our clients to other people, since we talk to a lot of people and we make five, you know, the 20 introductions every single day between the two of us, you know, like a D, I interviewed a D, right? And uh, D Clevett, she's amazing with different, you know, mapping out process for companies. I was talking to someone today and I said, Hey, they're like, yeah, I really need these like processes in my companies. I'm like, I have the perfect person for you. I sent them the interview. I go, here's the interview I did with a D and, you know, check it out. And I was able to send them like her methodology, her thought leadership in, on my podcast. Yeah, and it becomes a much warmer introduction. I just did that this morning. Steve Simonson and Guillaume, two of our our clients, um, uh, at different points in time, I introduced the two of them, and I included with the introduction a link to the interview that I'd done. Yeah. Um, so so uh, the next, next one, one is potential clients. So this could be potential clients you see out there and go, this person, you know, this would be great content. First of all. You know, it's going to be someone in the industry. So it, it table stakes to say this is going to be great content. And I have to, I always yeah. say that. And there's different ways to create great content. And we have, we have, uh, there's stuff on the internet. We also have a course that kind of goes through uh, one section is, one whole section is about how do you create great content. But the potential clients, it could be someone you see out there that you do not know at all. 
um, that is a potential client. I, someone introduced uh, us to a potential client the other day, and I was like, wow, this person's like a rock star business. And, and before we even got into the conversation of, hey, I'm thinking of starting a podcast because that's where they're going, go, why don't we, why don't I just have you on the podcast and I'll feature your story. And then afterwards, we'll chat about what your questions are about podcasting. And so it's a way to just also just give to that person. I didn't go right into, let me tell you about all the stuff we do about how we can help you. I, I said, let me help you first and profile you. And then we could have a conversation after. So it could be people out there that you see companies out there that you're like, this would be a perfect, great content. It, it's a great potential client. Um, or it's someone that could introduce you as a client, potential yeah. client. What do you say to people who ha are hesitant to interview prospective clients because they feel like maybe one reason might be that they feel like they need to be the expert and the people that they are helping don't have anything of worth to share on a podcast. You mean an objection when you ask someone that? Is an that objection you to, you know, they're, they're, like if you ask someone and they say, well, I'm, I'm not sure I have that much to share. Is that, is that the no? I, I, what I was um, asking about was if we have someone who is doing a podcast, this often comes up with people who've been doing a podcast for a while and they've only interviewed, you know, gurus, authors, speakers, which are the last category we haven't gotten to yet, but th that's the only types of people they focused on. And we say, well, have you interviewed any prospective clients? And they say, no, I've only interviewed gurus, authors, famous people, that sort of thing. Well, it's a wonder you haven't gotten any clients out of this, you know, because you're only interviewing people that it doesn't, they don't care a lick that they've been a guest on your podcast because they've been on a hundred other ones before. Um, so what do you say to people when they need to make that shift and they need to interview, you know, the, diversify it and, and also interview people that may be a good prospective client for them? Yeah. I mean, the people coming to us kind of realize there's an issue. They don't know what the issue is. And so one of the things we do is we go over these five categories and we show them how heavily weighted they are on one of them. So it may be, which is the last one, maybe the first one, which is they've just, you've been on calls where someone said, oh, let me check out what you're doing. Because a lot of people come, whether they have they want to optimize their podcast. So they're like, what do I need to do? We want also, they want to get out of the weeds of doing everything. And one of the things we look at is, oh, you're only talking in front of a mic about your thought leadership. You're not doing any of these other things. So it's kind of going over what I tell them is I go over these things and I tell them, tell them the opportunities in each of these categories and how it would benefit them. Um, and the, the last one, which people are also skewed on, we find people are skewed on the first one, which is the thought leadership, they're just them recording their thought leadership. They're not doing as many strategic referral partners. They're not doing as many clients and potential clients. Um, and they are doing a lot of this last one, which is the authorities in the space. So who are the big speakers, authors, gurus, influencers in the space? And they're going after those type of interviews. Um, they don't maybe they don't categorize it as that, and they don't realize it. But they're looking for bigger and bigger and bigger names, um, which you know it's going to be great content because of the obviously they're experts in the industry, and it's going to create a lot of social proof um, for to have that person on the show. But what it doesn't do, it's like it's harder because, like you said, when you're profiling those people. Um, they're very busy. They're very busy people. And the way we talk about a podcast is forming real relationships and giving to our relationships. And they're just so busy. It's sometimes hard to get deeper with some of these people, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll even add a subcategory. So the other, what you said authorities in the space, some people only pursue authorities outside of the space. So, you know, there are people that have achieved some notoriety, notoriety or fame, but not in the field that that person, the, the podcast, the, the host is focused on. And so, you know, they interview whoever's famous in other fields, but it doesn't have any strategic benefit. You know, the other thing I tell people is, look, over the next five years, 10 years in life, your network is constantly evolving. The people that you know, the people that you have relationships with constantly evolving. You add people, you drop people. You can either do that intentionally or not. 
And if you're interviewing a bunch of B-list celebrities who are on Survivor and you're interviewing uh, celebrity chefs and you're interviewing, you know, someone who wrote some book and hit the Amazon bestseller list uh, in some small subcategory for a week and a half and you're taking all the PR pitches that came in. Good luck to you, but that's going to that your network is going to be reflective of the yeah. time that you spent nurturing relationships with those types of people rather than focusing on authorities in your space, leaders in your space, speakers in your space, authors in your space. A good example, John, of that is there's been people that we have consulted with and know that their business is in like a B2B business and they had a long string of comedians on. And yes. so in that situation, great. Like I love comedy, right? If it were up to me, I'd be like, yeah, I'm having every episodes with a comedian and I would get pure enjoyment out of that. But you have to kind of see, okay, maybe one out of every whatever number that you'll allow yourself to do that just because it's of self-interest and it's interesting. But what's going to keep someone continuing doing a podcast is making sure it serves the goals and the mission of the content and the business, in which case you someone will quit very quickly. Typically, if they go down that route and you're like, this isn't doing anything for me. I mean, this is fun, but it's all it's time and energy. Right. 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 Exactly. So just to sum those up again, summarize the five different categories. Jeremy, do you want to run through them yeah. again for us? So there's the um, thought leadership, thought leadership of the this is internal of the of the team. Um, and, you know, the per the founder, CEO or the team itself. There's referral partners, strategic partners. There's uh, clients you could have on for interviews. You could have potential clients on for interviews. And then you could have authorities in the space if there's you know bigger names authority speakers authors celebrities in the space and those are when you think of the buckets that you're going to produce content falling into one of those buckets yeah exactly um all right thanks everyone thank you jeremy where can people go to learn more about us or what else can we can do to help people who want to go deeper with this and explore the possibility of having their own podcast yeah. I mean, one of the things that we do, we always recommend people who we start with, we do this dream 100 process with people and it's, it's very personal. It's one-on-one -on -one calls. It's three calls typically where we map out a six to 12 month plan. So if it's something you're interested in doing, um, you could email us, um, and go to rise 25.com and you can go to the, the contact us or email support at rise25media.com. If you want to check out more episodes, go to smartbusinessrevolution.com and check out the podcast that John is the host of. And you can go to inspiredinsider.com and check out some of the interesting uh, interviews I've done there. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for being here. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other if you find the same right now I feel like a hundred grand